I've told a few stories already about cats that have been an important part of my life, including Sassy, who's still around with us at 19 years old, and the two kittens that I, I raised, little boy and little girl, uh, who lived to be about 12 or 13. And today I'm going to tell you about uh, another cat who I didn't own, who wasn't part of my household except for a short time, but who was kind of an important fixture in my life. And his name was Cricket, and he belonged to my grandpa and my grandma on my mom's side, who had recently, at that time, uh, about five years before, built their retirement homes in northwestern Indiana, where my family still has these houses and uh, land. You know, Shea Lemries is, is what the sign reads as you come in, and that's from my mother's side of the family. And if we go back to 1980, when I was uh, just 10 years old, my mother had had an operation and was recovering from it. So we decided instead of having her travel, she and my dad decided to host the family Christmas, the Lemrees family Christmas of our branch of the Lemrees family, the Aime, Bibian, and also Hubert and, and Therese branch um, out at our house. And, you know, my mom and dad, about five years before that, had bought land <clears throat> and had built a house in the hills of Delafield, which is a subdivision at that time, like totally uninhabited. We were like the second family to move in and the lots didn't move for a long time. So it was, it was basically countryside for quite a long time, close to the village of Wales. And by that time, you know, there, there were quite a few families in there and we had a lot of space. I remember sleeping um, up in my mom and dad's room on the floor while all the family was there because somebody had my bedroom for their branch of the family. And when I say branch of the family, so there's my grandfather and grandmother, Aimee and Bibian Lemries, who, by the way, were um, uh, my uncle Hubert, my grandfather's brother, married uh, Therese, my grandmother's sister. So two brothers and two sisters who actually had houses side by side connected by a garage. Um, Uncle Hubert and Aunt Tunney, that's what we called Aunt Therese, were, you know, childless, but they were always like a second pair of grandparents. So my mom had two brothers and one sister. And the one brother, uh, Aim uh, had you know been divorced and and his his uh, child wasn't in the picture anymore at that point. Although she's since become you know connected to the family, but Uncle John and Aunt Mary, my mother's brother and, and sister-in-law, and Aunt Bibian and Uncle Scott, they had kids. So um, there were all of us there, and then of course my dad's father, my grandpa Joe, or. Uh, Grandpa Sadler was also living with us and spending a lot of time in the basement, which we'd furnished. Now, there's a backstory as well about cats. So my Uncle Aim at that time lived with my grandfather and grandmother in a, a, a little basement room that he'd furnished himself. He was a great carpenter. He had an entire wood shop down there. And um, anyway, he... Um, you know, he had a cat that came along with him named Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, unfortunately, died out on County Line Road within a couple months of being there. <clears throat> so they got another cat who was named Cricket. That cat, unfortunately, died uh, in 1980. And Grandpa and Grandma were kind of unhappy and wanted to have another cat. So my mom and dad got together and they said, well, let's let's give them a kitten for, for Christmas. And they went, they, you know, it was easy enough to find somebody who had kittens available. And we were a bit worried because at that time we also had a pretty big dog. Her name was Lady and uh, my dad had picked her out, but she was really like my dog. And uh, Lady was a black lab German shepherd mix about 70 pounds. So pretty big. And what was going to happen when we brought this little kitten in there? which we did about a month before, you know, so already in November, we, we had this, this little kitten and it was pretty amazing. Lady and this kitten would snuggle together 
and play together. Lady would actually pick up a rag and shake it in front of this tiny kitten's face. And then the kitten would chase her around the basement or upstairs. And, you know, the kitten would laboriously make its way up the stairs and then, you know, crawl around and explore the entire place. And so Cricket was a pretty cool cat. Lady also used to play this game with a kitten where the kitten would crawl inside of a paper bag. I'm not sure where the paper bags came from and uh, would rustle the bag a little bit, and then Lady would stick its nose in there, and then the kitten would attack her muzzle. And the kitten, you know, had some pretty sharp little claws, but Lady didn't, didn't mind. And the one thing that was even the, the best, that, now that I remember it, we, in the basement, we had uh, a couch. And, you know, it had a back, like couches do, and the kitten would get up on top of the couch and then crouch down so Lady couldn't see it. And Lady would walk by the couch and the kitten would jump on her back, like right on her shoulders and grab onto her neck. And then Lady would run around with this kitten clinging to her as if the kitten was riding her like a cowboy riding a bull or something like that until the kitten would eventually fall off. And then they'd, you know, hang out together and do that. So in any case, you know, the kitten adjusted very well. And then, you know, the whole family came and I don't think we put the kitten inside a bag or anything, but we said, hey, Grandpa, here is your new cat. And then Grandpa immediately named the cat Cricket. So this is Cricket 2. And that's, you know, I guess they, they just thought they'd recycle the name or something like that. And so, you know, Grandpa and Grandma and Aunt Tony and Uncle Hubert, they all stayed with us, I think, about a week or so. My, you know, my two grandpas liked to hang out together. And so they'd, they'd sit in the basement. Grandpa Sadler would sit in his chair. Uh, Grandpa Lamriz would sit in, in another chair or on the couch. And they'd watch TV together and smoke cigarettes and shoot the shit and drink beer and, you know, all, all of that sort of stuff. And... In any case, they took the little kitten home with them, and he became Cricket. And Grandpa, he liked the cat a lot, and the cat would follow him around when he went hunting, and, you know, he'd, he'd shoot rabbits, and, and the cat would, you know, follow him, and, and uh, uh, Cricket himself was, was a great hunter over time as well. We saw him sometimes carrying all sorts of things around. But Grandpa didn't like Cricket to come inside. I think he had the idea that cats are supposed to be outside creatures. And, you know, back in that time before global warming in, in you know, the 80s, it was actually pretty cool down in the winters in Indiana. And so Cricket, um, he was allowed to come into the basement occasionally to warm up by the wood stove. Grandma would sometimes let him in, but then Grandpa would often like put him outside in the garage. And he had a box on one side of the garage and a box on the other side of the garage where he would crawl up on and he could, you know, cuddle up in some blankets or towels or stuff like that. And I would stay there a lot, you know, from my uh, preteen years all the way through my teen years and then into my 20s. I spent a lot of time there, sometimes um, large portions of the summer. And, you know, a lot of family vacations, you know, Christmas, Easter breaks, we would spend down there in Indiana. I think in part because it was it was cheap, right, to hang out with relatives. And sometimes, you know, when my dad was still alive and then afterwards when it was just my mom, I think they would put me down there basically so that they could get some, you know, alone time as adults. Uh, my sister would get sent to Chicago frequently to stay with my Uncle John and Aunt Mary, but I would stay with uh, Grandpa and Grandma or Uncle Hubert and Aunt Tony or with my uh, Aunt Bib and, and Uncle Scott. And Cricket was a, an important part of that. I'd see him wandering around. I'd call to him and he'd come over and I'd, you know, scratch him. And he'd, he was cool with that. And sometimes we'd play a little bit, but he was very independent. And one of the things that I, I remember in particular that I really liked about him was when I would come home at Christmas and we would have our um, big Christmas Eve thing, which is a giant dinner where we would make all of our uh, family dishes, you know, Tootsie Eye, which is a Canadian meat pie. And, uh, you know, the, there'd always be a man, sometimes it would be my grandpa, sometimes Uncle John, sometimes I'd do it, making the oyster soup. And there were all sorts of other things, the bouche de Noel. 
So we'd, we'd get together and we'd hang out and sing Christmas songs and have this great feast. And then we would have on Christmas Eve the opening of the presents and go upstairs in Uncle Hubert and Aunt Tony's place, and, uh, which is also where we had the, the meal. And, um, you know, open the presents and stuff like that. And back then, you know, in, in my teen years and my 20s, I was a smoker. And so we would, we would go outside to smoke. And so that meant going out into the garage and we'd often, you know, be drinking beer as well while we're doing that. And cricket would often be there. And so I'd, I'd hang out with cricket and, you know, um, you know, have a cigarette and pet him and talk to him a bit. And he'd, you know, curl up next to me and push with his head. He was a giant cat, by the way. He got pretty big. His head was like about this big around. And towards the end of his life, when I was uh, in college, um, so I'm in my, my early 20s, and I would go down there. He had these fangs that were really long. As cats get old, their fangs get longer and longer. And, and male cats especially get quite long fangs that just stuck out of his mouth. And he'd rub up against me and those fangs would, you know, poke into my hand and stuff like that. And it was really nice because uh, he was something that I, I looked forward to every time that I would visit to get to see Cricket. And of course, you know, Outside cats don't tend to live as long as inside cats. Cricket was not an inside-outside cat. He was mostly outside and then, you know, staying in the garage as his place. And he, he basically just ate whatever kibble they served him and whatever animals he killed and wanted to, to you know, to gnaw on. So his diet, I'm sure, was not the best. And they, I don't think they ever took him to a vet. You know, my, my grandpa wasn't going to shell out money for that. So it's probably a, kind of a, a miracle he lived as long as he did. And he was just a, a cool cat, you know, very, very much a cat's cat, you could say. Uh, a lot of instinct, a lot of um, seeking comfort and friendship among those who would give it to him. And, uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed him. It's been a very long time, you know, more than 25 years since I've seen him. So more than half of my life, but I, I still fondly remember him. And especially this time of the year when it's, you know, the Christmas holiday. And I would, you know, as a, a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult, be down there in Indiana, um, spending time reading you know, uh, by the wood stove or playing outside and, and seeing him, you know, tramp around in the snow and then coming inside to, to hang out with him in the garage where it was, it was pretty cold, but it wasn't outside cold and petting and uh, petting him and spending time with him. You know, um, he was a really nice fixture. And I remember him in, in these stages from being a little tiny kitten playing with our dog, all the way to being, you know, a kittenish cat, to growing and becoming big and, and strong and going out and hunting and ranging around. As I'd walk the trails, sometimes I'd run into him or he'd follow me <laughs> along, along the trails and, you know, wanting to hang out with me. So that's just my reminiscences, reminiscences of this uh, cool cat, Cricket, that um, entered our life around Christmas time and one of those Christmases is the last time that I, I saw him.